Hey, Merry Christmas. Community Bible Church, Church Cibolo. It's great to see you. I feel like having to follow, you know, like you two in concert. Get up and follow that. Okay. <laughs> that was great. That was worshiping. And toward the end, I realized, man, I got to preach. I'm trying to hit the high notes. My voice is going. So, man, that was a great worship. I was pumped up. That's what Christmas is all about right there. Jesus Christ, our King, our Lord. And it's Him we worship. So, if you would break open your bulletin, there's a few now announcements we need to, to go over. Um, we, the big thing is that we have our Christmas Eve service on the 24th. So, please RSV. We have another announcement that we would like to share with you at this time. So, my family and I, Lisa and I, have been church planning for eight years. Do you know that? We partnered with our friends in Colorado and we planted Calvary Fellowship in South Colorado Springs by Fort Carson. We worked there for four years. God called us to San Antonio, took a little bit of a break, and then God called us to start CBCSC here in the beautiful Shirt Civil area. To you lovely people, church planning is hard work, people. And what I'm saying is, I'm burned out a little. My wife's burned out a little. She's been leading the worship. Uh, she sings on the worship team, which she loves that. So I don't know if that's like a uh, work for her. It's like me preaching. It's not really work if you love to do it, you know. But she was, she's been leading the children's ministry and helping out with all these things, being a mother and a family. But after eight years, we're a little bit burned out. So we're going to go on an extended vacation. It's kind of like when you're in the military and you had like 90 days saved up. Or 60 days. And instead of taking a day at a time, you're going to be like, I'm calling in all 60. Or whatever. So Lisa and I have decided, and with the approval and encouragement of the elders, to take a sabbatical. And we're going to do it. We're going to take some time off. Now, we're not taking time off from you guys because we love y'all. You're going to still see us around. But we're just going to have a light load for a little bit. Um, let's have our elders come up here, please. Steve Goen, Chris Montalvo, Sean Dittman. And with their encouragement, we are going to, again, take this break. And we're going to distribute all of the things we've been doing. We're going to distribute those out to people in our church who've already stepped up to do things. And we'll go over that in a minute. So I'm still going to be around. We're still going to be around. But we're going to go on vacation. We're going to take time off, go do things. But we'll be around and you'll see us. So I leave you in the capable hands of preaching on Sunday mornings to my, to my good friend Sean Dittman. And he's going to be doing most of the preaching or all the preaching. And hey, I might even come in and preach a message or two during this time. Who knows? So my boy Sean will be doing the preaching and then we leave you in the worship ministry with uh, Chris and Steve. Let me tell you what. You know what's great about these? You're too far away. What's so great about these guys? They get it. They get what the body of Christ is about. They get it's about Jesus Christ. It's about making disciples. And they're fully committed to making disciples and and starting new works, new life groups in Shirt Cibolo. And adding to the church daily those who are being saved. So we're committed as a board and as pastors to leading our church that way. I've said from day one, I don't want this to be a phased church. I want this to be a 400 year church. And to be a 400 year church we have to set the foundation upon the word of God. And based upon the book of Acts in the New Testament. And so we're fully committed to that. And these guys will be here serving with you. So if you have a problem, you're going to pick up the phone call and call me in the next... No. You're going to call any, Mini, Hermione. <laughs> and then Mo would be Paula Montavo. 
back to me. Y'all call them, and they're going to handle it because I'm going on vacation. Okay? And we'll be back. But these guys got it. They're fully capable. If I were to die of a heart attack today, this church would be in great hands. It would keep growing. People would still be saved and disciples. Because it's not about us or me. It's about Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit working through the shepherds. He has, this in, has leading us and you guys. He's working through you to get the work done. So, anything? I love you. I love you. Well, thank you. All right, enjoy guys. I will enjoy my time. Thank you. Thank you. And my daughter Ava said this morning, we're like, what do you think of that, Ava? And she's like, well, it's about time. <laughs> you need to concentrate on those things that are most important in life. Me. <laughs> she was joking, of course. It was hilarious. Only, and, and with the delivery, my daughter has perfect comedic timing. She just nails it every time. So that's what we're going to be doing. So when we, you might be asking the question, well, what are we going to do when you're gone? So here's what's really going to happen. I just want to give you a little bit of an overview. So the pastors and I have also been working on our two to five year plan, our, our short term plan. But again, we're flexible in this. Our vision is to strengthen one another through truth and community. And we're going to lead based upon the vision that God has given us. That's what good leadership does. You don't go back and forth. You, you lead to the vision that God has given you and to the word. So how can we strengthen families if one person is doing all the work in the nursery and never gets to fellowship, never gets to be a part of what's going on in here? Uh, Melody Haas. If, you, uh, if you're continually working, if there's only a few people that are doing most of the work and the heavy lifting, you'll burn out over time. And that's not what church is to be about. So we are going to strengthen one another through disbursement of work. And disbursement of workload. Strengthening one another through community and truth. So we've tried to rearrange our structure of our church to meet the mission and the vision. That means strengthening individuals and families, including my family and your family, and individuals, individual households. Whether you're single or divorced, whatever, it doesn't matter. Therefore, we'll structure our church around the, the visions and the volunteers that we have. Sometimes as leaders, uh, i.e. John Bowling, make mistakes because we have the vision and we want to re hey these are the goals this is what we need to be doing come on people reach up to to the goals that God has for us which is good a little bit but you also need to be realistic and structure around the volunteers that you have not the ones you wish you had so that is what we're going to do structure our church around the servants and people that we do have not the ones we wish we had so until we hit the numbers of these ministries and volunteers, this is the way we're going to structure our church. Welcome to Community Family Church, friends. Welcome. This is what it looks like. For those who have babies, zero, I mean, first week old to, to they're not walking yet, you know, nine or ten months, you're going to stay, stay in here with your parents. It's those ones that start walking that cause all the trouble. So from walkers to kindergarten. I know some of you are thinking, my son's a skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Yeah, your, your skywalker is going to go to preschool in the nursery area. So walkers through kindergarten are going to be in the nursery. And then everyone from first grade through fifth grade is going to stay in here. We're going to have family worship every week. Welcome to family, community family church. This is what we're going to do. Now some of you may be thinking, well, that might be a problem. Hey, no, it's not. I grew up in church. We didn't have children's church when I was in school. And guess what? See who I am today? And that's the perfect example why we need the kids back there. <laughs> kids, 
will be in here worshiping. We're going to have color sheets for them. They can do their thing and hang out. They can lay on the floor if they want. I don't care. Right? Lay on the floor, color, do just as long as they're not disrupting the worship and the, and the teaching of God's Word. Um, and then, if you have, you know, if you're nursing and your child uh, needs nourishment or whatever, you can take your child to the nursery. And in there, we're going to be piping in music and preaching. So if you happen to be in there, you can do that. And then. Okay, high school and junior high will start to meet on Saturday nights. For the meantime, we're going to join high school and junior high together. Take those 15 or 20 students, put them together for high school ministry on Saturday nights. That, when that happens, one of the elders will be there at that event. And we have our volunteers for that, Jason Rackley. Uh, Chance and Samantha Alwyn, uh, Tommy and Catherine Hill will be helping out with that as well. So they're going to come together, play games, worship together, and then when it's time to talk about teenager stuff, we'll break them up in the junior high and high school. Because really, a 12th grader with the 6th grader, okay, Harold and a six, high 12th grader, really, come on, it's not going to work. We love Harold, but... He was like John Bowling when I was in the sixth grade. Couldn't sit still, running around, causing trouble. But I love Jesus, and I wanted to be there, so I love Harold. But, you know, you see the difference, so we'll just break him up into uh, groups for their study time. And then life groups should stay, this, um, stay the same. We may add a new life group to that. So it'll just keep going. Now, I have a graph I want to show you and share right quick before we move on. So, here's what we have. We need a total, if you want the whole church program, elementary, uh, baby, all the way through fifth grade, this is what you're going to need, right? 34 volunteers, 34 servants. We have 10, we need 24 more. So, when we add on to those, see that? When we add on, we can add the nursery. When we add on to that, we need 8 to add the nursery. We need 12 more to add elementary school plus 4 alternates. But I believe where God guides, he provides. And so God will provide everything that we need to minister, to strengthen one another and our families during this time and moving forward in our church. So if you have any questions... Feel free to call those guys <laughs> while I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can talk to me also. You can send me an email if you want. So that's that. That's where God has us. That's where we're going. Our mission is to reach, teach, and help people in Jesus' name. Our goal, I would love for over the next year in 2015, if we can add two new life groups to our church, to go into our neighborhoods and fulfill our dream of having a life group in, or a church in every neighborhood in Shirt Civilly. That's where we want to go. And so uh, pray with us as we move to fulfill God's church planning vision for our church. Pray for my family that we would recover quickly. So, all right, let's pray. We'll get to our Christmas light. Jesus Christ, we come before you today. Thank you for a loving church and a loving shepherds in our church that would Encourage me to take some time off in a sabbatical to minister to my own family and to find rest in your presence. And so, Father, I thank you for them. I know that this church will, during this time, they'll be strong and will continue to follow you and continue to make disciples as we meet together and we serve one another. I pray for all of our family members of our church who are traveling this week. I pray that you would give them safe passage to where they're going and, and getting back. We pray that the light of Christ would shine through them to all around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. Amen. Oh, they can? Okay. Well, adios. Elementary school kids, you may leave and go with your teacher.
Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Today I want to talk to you about Christmas light. L-I-G-H-T. Christmas light. The Christmas light. Jesus Christ. You know, when I was preparing for my message and my sermon, I was trying to do the classic Christmas sermon. You know, Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus in, in Bethlehem. And I'm trying to talk about the wise men and everything else and the gold and frankincense and myrrh. But I keep coming back to Christmas light. The light of the world, Jesus Christ. And so when the Holy Spirit's got a hold of you, you can't resist it. You can't let go. You got to go with it. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Looking at the Christmas light. The miracle of Christmas light. John 1, 1 through 5. This is before Jesus the incarnate comes into the world at Christmas. In the beginning was the Word. And we know and discover later on in the book of John that the Word is Jesus Christ. That's another adjective for Jesus Christ. That's an adjective for the pre-existent, pre-eternal Jesus Christ. We studied that in our sermon series, The Real Jesus Christ. You know, part of the, the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's Jesus. Before the foundation of the world, before the world and the universe was ever created, he was around. Complete harmony, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He, Jesus Christ, was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the what? The light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. He is the light. Later, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except by me. It's an off-quoted verse, but it's true. So, Christmas light is not something ambiguous, uh, something that's, you know, just kind of out there. It's something very specific. Christmas light is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And the problem we have in America, and I think in some of our churches, is that we don't have Christmas light. We have Christmas light, L-I-T-E. You get my drift? Whenever something is spelled L-I-T-E, you know it's not any good. <laughs> Brownies light. What? Brownies light does not taste good. Pepsi light or whatever. No. It's terrible. It's imitation. It's fake. It's not the real thing. And I think that Many in our world and sometimes even Christians get caught up in Christmas light. L-I-T-E. But that is not what God would have for us. Now, let's look at Christmas light. I also put up there Christian light. It's kind of the same thing. Christmas light, L-I-T-E. Christian light, L-I-T-E. It equals blinded by demonic forces. It is mankind's best attempt to achieve internal peace. To have a good feeling. It's man's best attempt to treat each other nicely. It's man's attempt, Christmas light, Christian light is man's attempt to obtain heaven on earth. To obtain salvation in and of themselves. You know what I'm talking about? People bustling around. The businessman, he's going to take advantage of everyone 364 days a year. But on Christmas Day, Christmas light, I can be a good human and I won't cheat anyone. Why? Because he's closed on Christmas Day. That's why. So it's man's best attempt to reach God. It's to reach this hierarchy 
of the human plane to be at our best and we're wishing everyone cheer. You go to the store, hey, happy holidays to you and happy Hanukkah and every once in a while they'll throw in a Merry Christmas and what is it all about to help us feel good, to, to be able to, to have this Christmas feeling that we all want. See, it's in all the movies. Who saw Scrooge? Who's seen Scrooge? See, at the end of that movie, Bill Murrow was like, and you can have the miracle too if you just believe. And, and if you really want this miracle, you can have the miracle. I'm like, no. You've heard by the world. The world says you can have the Christmas miracle if you just believe. But Jesus Christ says you may have the Christmas miracle if you believe in me. You see the difference? Christmas light. Christmas light. Christmas spirit. And instead of Christmas light and Christian light, we should have the light of Christmas, Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. The light has come into the world. The world, did, in the darkness, excuse me, the world, the darkness, did not overcome it. Now, at the bottom here, I have 2 Corinthians 11.14. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. See, it doesn't say that Satan is an angel of light, but he's like an angel of light. There's a difference. And he tries to spread his Christmas light, L-I-T-E, to the world. And he tries to hijack the Christians' Christmas and their life with his light. Now, Christian, if you're here and you're not feeling Christmas this year, maybe because sometimes in our minds if you're from another part of anywhere except San Antonio South to anywhere else. At Christmas it's cold. And so if you move to South Texas, man it just doesn't feel like Christmas because it's not cold outside. It doesn't feel like Christmas. It, it doesn't look like Christmas. And so you have people running around Seeking this Christmas feeling and wanting to experience Christmas on a greater level, but you're not feeling it, it's not happening. You know? Ever feel like that? Maybe like you're missing out. Everyone else on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Oh, our family's got it going on. Look at all the Christmas lights, and we're all fun, and we're all smiling, and we're taking selfies at the concert. I can't even say the name that uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I think I said that right. Pretty cool thing. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying everyone else is having a great Christmas. Look at the smiles on their faces. They must have the real deal. I want that. I don't have that. How can I get it? How I want it. You can have it. And then that's when Christmas light comes in. Hey! Buy your kids the presents, stack them up high and deep, baby, and that'll be great. That's Christmas light. Because guess what? When I was 12, I got an Atari 2600 for Christmas. And within two years, it was a piece of junk. Because they came out with Atari uh, 5200. Thank you. <laughs> 5200. And even better than that was ColecoVision. Coleco vision kicked their, I mean, all of them out the window. So my Christmas was a piece of junk within two years. All the gifts you have, all the Nikes my mom gave me, man, got the cool Nikes and the kicks and the swoosh. Yeah, those wore out. See, that's the problem with Christian light and Christmas light. It wears out. It never satisfies. It's imitation. Have you ever had Hagen dazs Do a taste test between imitation vanilla ice cream and haagen -Dazs. There's not even comparison. There's, you eat the haagen -Dazs and you, you know, throw this other stuff out and that's what the difference between Christmas light and Christian light, L-I-T-E and Christmas light, L-I-G-H-T. It's imitation. It's not the real thing. It leaves you empty. It, it leaves you in a place of depression. 
and hurt and confusion because it never adds up to what the world and what Satan and what the darkness says. If you want to experience the Christmas miracle, if you want to have the Christmas joy, I think it is found in this one thing. Seeing the depth of your darkness in its, all its reality and the light of Christ and all of his glory. The difference between the two is where the joy and the salvation is found. So, here's what I mean. Um, see, our darkness is right here. This is like the line right here down the middle is the line of salvation. And as humans... And as Christians, sometimes we, we forget these things, right? And we think all we had to do, like Nicodemus, was make a few adjustments in my life and I could be born again and saved. See that? Oh, I'm over here now. And all I have to do is this. And I just have a little faith and I'm right there and you're back and forth. No. You see this little line, this little millimeter that you think that, that somehow we were saved with before I could be saved from? This little millimeter is infinity. See that? And we're not even right there. We're all the way over here. We're all, the, this is the difference. This is infinity. All the way, past all this, all the way back. This, if this is like infinity darkness, well this is infinity darkness times infinity darkness. If that is life, this is death. I mean, I'm not talking being dead for a week. I've been talking about Dead since Adam has been dead. Since Cain, the first guy who died in the world. This is where we are. Okay? That's reality. This is why we miss it. We miss the joy of Christmas because we forget that's where we started. That's where we started. Now, look in your Bible. Christmas light. Overcoming it. Now, here's what Jesus says. Christmas light says you can have salvation. You, if you're good enough, if you come to church, you check off the boxes, you come and have worship time and you listen to a message and you take the Lord's Supper and you have some good feelings and you help some people, then, hey, I can be saved. I can have light. I can have life. Well, that's wrong. Darkness is coming through the world. Genesis 3. Hey, our boy, Adam and Eve. We stand here today, Hispanic, black, white, and everything in between, mixing and matches and everything else. We stand here as brothers and sisters before God Almighty, the human race. All messed up because Adam's sin, the original sin, passed on to us. So that darkness is coming to the world. Now listen, back to John 1, 4 and 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not, what, comprehend it. The darkness has invaded. But Satan and the false teachers would have you believe, hey, it's all right. We got Christmas light. We got Christian light. Come in, feel good, have your best life now, and everything will be great. You're on your way to heaven. That's a lie. That's Christmas light. It's imitation. Darkness has come into the world by, by uh, sin. Adam and Eve chose to sin and it's passed on to us. And we all sin, right? And so the darkness spreads. It's like a blackout. You ever seen like a movie where a blackout? And like a chunk. Like an EMP blast. And then you could see it. Choo, 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 choo. And the whole city is getting dark. Pow, pow, pow. And the whole world has gotten black. It has turned dark because of sin. There's not an ounce of light in us. Genesis 3. Genesis 6, 5, and 7. So there's darkness has come into the world. There's darkness all around us. Genesis 6, 5, and 7. Read this and see if, you, if it's not where we're living today in the world and in America. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man and I have created on the face of the earth. And then he brought the flood. 
So darkness spread throughout the world like a cancer. He eliminated it with the flood. And Noah and his sons and their wives. And, the, and from them it spread again. And evil and darkness has spread all throughout the world once again. Next, darkness within you. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's, that's not someone else's heart. That's my heart. That's your heart. Don't think for a minute that there was anything good in you before Christ. There wasn't. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm just building my key case for the darkness. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So death came, darkness fell, and uh, man died, and the world died, and it no longer brings forth fruit and vegetables on its own. We have to work to till the land to bring forth those things. So Christmas light, L-I-T-E, says that you can make it to God, you're good. But the word of God says, Jesus says, we were in lost in darkness eternally this way. Not even a hope of life, not a, even a hope of light or a spark of light in us. The, the sad thing is that Satan makes, as he comes as an angel of light, as he makes people believe that they're Christians when they're not. That's the sad thing. And he has people entrapped in the darkness with the Christmas light. L-I-T-E. Headed to hell. Think they're doing good. Spreading their Christmas cheer. And it's sad. God breaks our heart for them. And that's why we exist as a church. To take the light to them. So that's the case for the darkness. That's the negative part. But here comes the Christmas light. Here's the joy. See, as far as we were away from God this way... God's holiness, the light of Christ is infinity this way. All the way. And there's no way to bridge the... How can you ever even think about bridging the gap between God's worst, if there was such a thing? There's not. But if there was, His worst and our best is still in eternity. It's not even close. There's such a great gulf fix between the two. It could never be bridged. In our own abilities. Christmas light. L-I-T-E comes from Satan in the darkness. And it's no hope. And getting caught up in that. Leads to depression and eternal death. But the eternal life of Jesus Christ brings joy and hope and power. In Genesis 3.15 the same, the same chapter which talks about the fall of man also brings forth the light of Christmas. The Christmas story does not begin in the Gospels. It begins in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Listen to this. You regulars have heard me talk about this before. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head uh, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel he's talking to Satan that's the promise of the Messiah so as soon as humankind sinned Christ brought light into the situation he brought salvation into the life of Christians all was lost. Satan has thought he had pulled one over on God. But God made a prophecy. The light will come and it will shine in the darkness. It was promised forth from Adam to Adam and Eve. And the light was carried down through all of the Jewish people's lives. Abraham, Moses, Joseph, David, Solomon, Daniel... And all throughout this time, the nation of Israel caught up in their darkness, going after idols, going after idols that would sacrifice their children to those idols. Evilness, intermarrying with evil people. 
getting caught up in the things of this world, being d destroyed and enslaved by the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and going after these gods. There's no light in that. So they have this messianic fervor. They're looking for the Savior. They're looking for the light. I wish you could feel, I, I want you to feel the depth of what you were like before you were saved or where you're at bef before you become a Christian. I want you to feel that sense of urgency once again. Because out of that urgency, out of that sense of lostness and brokenness, that's where the joy of Christmas shines through. You feel it? All hope is lost. There's no hope. The building's about to blow up. You know, it's counting down. Three you know, you're looking at your wife or your kids and you're about to kiss them because you know the nuke's about to land. Three, two, one. And you're just like, oh no, this is terrible. We're lost, we're dead, there's no hope, there's no hope. And then, out of a little town in Bethlehem, the light shines in the darkness. Luke 2, 8 through 20. Matthew, Mark, New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke 2. 2, 8 through 20. Christmas light is shown. This is the Christmas, true Christmas light. L-I-G-H-T. As I read this gospel account of the birth of Christ, I want you to think about it on the backdrop of the dark plain that I just read. And tell me if your joy of Christmas does not start to return. If the light of dawn starts breaking through on the night of your soul once again. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. In their darkness, in their sin, in their messianic hope. The Romans are ruling us. There's no hope. There's no salvation for the Jews or the Gentiles. The promised light has not come. He'll never come. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Light, light, light in the darkness. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, and which will be to all people, to the Jew, to the Gentile. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. Good will toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. Then they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child by the angels. And all who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. 
But Mary kept all these things in her heart and pondered them. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and what? Glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen and was told of them. Amen. How can we not stand on our feet and, and, and cry out to God? How can we not sing and make a, a joyful noise, some of us, to make a joyful noise unto the Lord at the sound of this? My heart leaps out of my chest as I remember the darkness where I was. And when Christ found me, when the light of Christ shone upon my life, I will forever be indebted to him. I think of the Christians in Israel. Why not go to death and be martyred for Christ, for the one who brought light to your life? How, how else could you res not respond with that? Say Caesar is Lord, Christian. No, Jesus Christ is Lord. We're going to put you in Nero's garden, dip you in some tar, and set you on fire. Say, Caesar is Lord. No. Caesar is not Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's Christmas, my friends. That's the light of Christmas. And that's the change of Christmas. So God promised a saving light. He gave us the light. Jesus Christ. And the light came. And he died upon the cross. And he paid the price for our sins with his shed blood. And then he came back to life three days later, showing himself to be God, conquering sin and death. Easter. Easter is another time of year where we worship God and remember the greatness of the light of God, his son, Jesus Christ. John eight twelve. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Are you walking? Are you walking with Christ in the light? Are you getting caught up with Christmas light and Christian light, L-I-T-E? That stuff is all imitation. It's no good. It comes out of the darkness. But... The light of God, Jesus Christ, shines forth today to bring freedom, to bring joy to your life. I want you to experience your Christmas miracle this morning. Christmas is a few days away. I want you to experience your Christmas, your Christmas miracle. Not like Bill Murray talks about in Scrooge, but I'm talking about the real thing, the real deal. Authentic, Holy Spirit power generated, brought forth in your life. Whether you're saved or not saved, whether you're a Christian or not Christian, that's my Christmas miracle. That's my desire for you, is to experience the real thing. Have you been caught up in Christmas light, L-I-T-E? The things of this world, running around, buying presents? And again, I'm not saying that's bad. Hey, give presents. Light up your, light up your house like Clark W. Griswold on a Christmas vacation. Let them see it from space. Why? Because we celebrate Christ's birth. We celebrate the light of the world. We give presents. God gave us eternal life in Christ Jesus. So now I want to show the token of my appreciation to my family and friends and those in my community. Don't forget those people who don't have as much, who you can give a, a meal to. You can give presents to little children who don't, their parents don't have money. Tie that with the gospel. That is Christmas light. That is the real thing. And again, I think the joy is found knowing where you came from, knowing the depths of our sin, the darkness of our sin, compared to the light, never being able to, to reach the light, and then Christ bridging the gap. The Bible says there is one mediator, one bridge between God and man, Jesus Christ. He is the one who bridges us. He is the one who saves us. He is the one who does it all. Not us, him. 
him. And I think that you can find joy this Christmas by remembering that. Where you came from and where you're going. The Christmas miracle, my friends, is that we could have been saved, that we could have been forgiven, and that we could have eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So forsake the darkness and all the imitation of Christmas light, L-I-T-E, and fully embrace the power, the majesty, the salvation of the eternal God who died for us and came back to life. That is Christmas. That is Christmas light. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could come this morning and worship you and concentrate on you, Jesus Christ. You are the reason we exist. You are the reason we have eternal life. You have come into the darkness and set us free. And we praise you and we worship you. I pray, and I'm going to ask you, church, right now, if you have got your eyes off Christ and got your priorities out of whack, I pray that this morning that you would come back to Christ. That you would once again rededicate your life to following the light and walking in the light, Christ Jesus. I'm once again reminded, whoever follows me will, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the joy for the Christian is walking in the light. The personal relationship based upon grace given to us through Christ. So rededicate your lives to that families. Rededicate yourself to strengthening one another through the word of God and through fellowship. Father, give us opportunities this week to share the light of Christmas with someone else. The good news. I pray, Father, there's anyone here who does not know you, who needs to be born again, who is looking their Christmas miracle, that they would come and pray with one of the pastors of our church. They would give their life to you. Break through, Father. Break through the darkness. It says the darkness could not comprehend the light. So we pray that your Holy Spirit power would hold back the darkness and allow the light to penetrate into the hearts and minds of men and women. Draw us as a church closer to you. I pray for 2015 to be an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon this people once again and that you would allow us to reach many more with the gospel and to baptize many more and to start more churches and to make more disciples for your name's sake, not for our name's sake, but for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, if you are here and you need prayer, you need to talk to someone or to be counseled, I am up the front. Chris Montavo will be right here. Sean Dittman will be by this table over here. Steve Gohan will be in the back. Grab one of us. We will pray with you. We will talk to you about whatever you need. And you guys have a Merry Christmas. Keep the light burning.